Hello everybody and uh, welcome to today's uh, live webinar, 3D Animation with Blender. We're continuing with uh, part three. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanna welcome everyone to uh, today's workshop. So we have uh, all our uh, project partners I wanna thank for making this happen. Uh, we have the Canada Council for the Arts. We have our library partners, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. I um, want to also mention that we're, we're just uh, bringing in an iMac to the Wasaga Beach Public Library. That will be uh, available once libraries are, have access again. And there's uh, two iMacs at the Blue Mountains Public Library. So you can access these computer systems as well to use Blender. Blender's loaded on all of these. So, um, you know, if you're looking for a, a, another computer um, and, you know, you don't want to use uh, or, you know, you don't have a computer, uh, you can access these things through the library partner. So it's really great and exciting to be able to do that. So my name is uh, Tom Strad. I'm the lead digital artist of the Creator Space, and um, today we will be looking at um, the concepts of textures, camera, and lighting, and going through to uh, to rendering. In terms of the software we're using, uh, we're using the Blender software, and it is a free software. Um, so you can just go to blender.org to access it, uh, and it works on uh, all the OS systems as well. So it's not just Mac only. Um, as some of the other systems uh, we've been looking at, but uh, yeah, Mac, uh, Windows, Linux. So yeah, please uh, check that out. Um, and uh, without any further ado, uh, let me pass it over to Leon. Here we go. Over to you, Leon. Okay, thanks, Tom. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Blender Workshops Part 3. Uh, thank you again for uh, coming and like attending the uh, workshop. So uh, hopefully uh, all of you or some of you see some of the, uh, the previous workshop that we did, the part one and two. And uh, that's where we go through the basic and just started modeling and then texturing. So like now, Today, we, like Tom said, we're going to finish texturings are great. So what I have here is like, I'm almost, it's almost done texturings. And then from there, we can go do like setting up the camera for the final render, as well as the lighting in order to make everything look good. So yeah, let's, I get into it. I guess uh, now, I think the last time we are texturing this block of wood. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I textured this wood here, but I just like a quick refresher, I'm going to do a quick texturing in this one block here. And then after that, I'm just gonna copy and paste all the texture materials and the uh, UV wraps from one object to the other. So let's do that. What the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all this except this one block that I want to texture. So, and then if I press H in your keyboard, that is, uh, um, a shortcut key for hiding the objects from the screen. So let's do that. So everything's disappear. So we just have this one. So for this one here, let's just texture this right away. And I'm going to be in face mode over here, if you can see that, or you can press uh, number three on the top of your keyboard, that will change. The face mode is you click the face of your object. So that will select all this. All right. Oh, also, this is in front view. Is if you click the uh, shortcut key for that is one in your numpad. 
and that will be in the front view and three in your numpad is for your side view seven is for your top view so right now i'm in the front view front orthographics as you can see here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the front here and i'm going to select the back so let's just do that really quickly Now, let's go back to the front view again. And now we're going to unwrap this by pressing U. You can see uh, UV mapping, and we want to project from view. As you can see here, you have, if you, uh, right now it's like on top of each other, so you don't want that. You want to take this out and separate, but, if you do that, if you move, it will connect everything together. So we don't want that. So what we can do is select one of the um, the um, vertex points are uh, in in your what do you call it the UV editor. This is uh, so if you select one of the vertex points, if you uh, press Command L, it will select the face of that's the whole face of that object. And then you press G to move it, then you can separate it. That's, uh, that's to select the whole vertex. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to site view and we're going to select the site really quickly. I'm just gonna press C, I'm just gonna do Select this. Okay. Just make sure you're not selecting any faces beside the one that you want to be selected. And then we go to the site view again, press U, and then project from view. Now we have the same thing. We click any of the vertex, command L to separate it. And one last thing is we go to the we go to the top view and we select this one. And then if you press nine, it will flip to the bottom view. Okay, so just make sure you don't have any faces, any face uh, selected. Okay. And then go to the top view, press U, and project from view. And you got, you got your mesh pretty much unwrap. Now, what we're gonna do is to Make sure this is organized so it's easier. I'm gonna scale this back a little bit just to get the same sizing. So let's go bring this up so we can see more. All right, so that is your object's skin uh, unwrap. Okay. So what next is we want to um, put a textures in this object here. So let's go and hide all the other objects that we had uh, created uh, that we hide before. Uh, so if you press Alt H, that will bring your all your objects that being hide 
uh, appear again in the, in the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same texture that I created for all the other uh, all the other objects. But let's say if you decided to use a different textures, what you can do is you can click on the object. And then if you go to the right uh, side here, at, at the uh, second from the bottom here, you get the material properties. So what you can do is you click on that, and then you want to click new, add new materials. Right now, if you go this material one here, which is basically this wood material, I mean, uh, let's call it wood material. Okay. So, and if you want to create, let's say, instead of a wood, you want to make it as a um, a metal or something like that. So you can click new, and then it will create it the whole new uh, nodes for that. And you can see it here. You, you can add it here, or you can use this. So you, eventually, this is how you it's going to see, right? Like uh, you're gonna add your textures and then connect it to your main principle PSDF, and then that's your material output. Now, if you have uh, if you're confused about this, please refer to part two. I went deeper in that on the last part and if you have any other questions regarding this please write the notes and so we can address it at the end of the uh, um, at the end of the class okay so let's go back to this object here that we um, we just unwrap the skin so what we what we want to do, what I want to do, <laughs> is to transfer these materials from here to here. So basically, I'm using the same material. So I can either, that's the best way is to go to the material preview and then select wood materials, right? And then they will put the uh, wood materials there. And if you like the shortcut key, you just select your objects first and then select the other objects that have the material and then you press command l and then you can make links materials so either that both method work so it's really up to you which one you want to use okay now that we have this object have a materials now we just want to make sure the material is lined up properly in our UV editor. So let's hide all this again. So we can see, as you can see, it's not bad, right? Is it's just albedo. So this is, if you look at it, it's pretty good. And since I'm copying the previous materials, I already have like the bump node, the normal uh, the normal map, and all the uh, the effects to make this more uh, real compared to, uh, you know, instead of like just a flat textures. So you can see like, it looks like a bumpy uh, wood. It, it looks like you, you can feel the textures in the wood in the object. So that's pretty good. I pretty satisfied with it like i mean if, if you're not satisfied with how the textures appear on your object then you can just uh, scale this and make sure that move it anywhere you need it to move and to look exactly how you envision it so at this moment right now i'm pretty happy with how it looks like how it looks at the moment so i'm just gonna keep it as is so we can continue on so we're going to go Alt-H again. That will bring all the appear. So now it's the easiest part. Now that you have everything uh, that you want to be textures done, so what we can do is we just select, uh, select the uh, 
the rest of the objects that has not been textured. And then we select the object that has been textured. We have, we con uh, command, command L, then you can transfer the UV map. That means it will have the same uh, UV map look like the one that we just created. And then if we command L again, and then we link it to materials. And voila, it's done. So I'm going to do the same with all this on the side. So I'm just going to select all the untextured object. And then the, the last, I'm selecting the texture one, command L, transfer UV map, command L, materials. There you go. It's easy, right? So the hard part is done. We just need to transfer, transfer, same thing. L, transfer UV map, and transfer, transfer materials. There you go. We're done. One created step. So just one last thing here at the bottom. Uh, you can either unwrap it normally, like you want to do like unwrapping, like what we did last time. As uh, height, oh, okay. let's hide all the other object. Uh, don't want that. And let's unwrap this really quickly. That's a little bit bent there, so let's fix that. All right, so it's <laughs> just like uh, needy details that I just need to fix that. Okay, let's go back to texturing. Let's select the top. And flip, select the bottom. And then you project from view. Same thing from the front. Make sure you're selecting the proper face. View, project from view. And then we're gonna go here. And one last thing to do. Okay, perfect. Good. From you. So if we select everything, Control L to get that separated. I like to have this the texture screen once it's unwrapped properly established within the boundary. So just to make it easier to figure out where your texture is gonna go. All right, so 
that's okay. All right, so now what we need to do is we're just going to link the material to the wood material. And right now you don't see anything, right? Because we are not in render mode. So if you press Z, it will be opening a, a wheel there. And then we want to, you know, we can go and choose which one. Right now we are in solid mode. So we want to go to render mode. There you go. Well, it doesn't look that, doesn't look properly. So I'm not gonna fix this, but like you can play around with um, um, to make the textures looks better. And as you can see here, it doesn't look right. So I, that's the reason why is because of um, right now we are. If you remember, we are using um, the add modifier on the right here. We are using the subdivisions. So because it's trying to smooth your object and it's really not, it's, uh, because your object right now, the, if you don't have this uh, subdivisions modifier, your object is gonna be like really, uh, rigid, right? So you can either do that. You can add the sub um, subdivisions, but it will add it. Uh, I guess what do you call it again? It will add it more triangle into your object without actually adding it. <laughs> How do I say this? As you know, like I'm in the triangle the count that is very important for, a, especially for a game design. So the lower the triangle count in your objects, the easier it is for your um, computer, for people's computers to render. But for a movie, you don't really you don't need to worry about that because you know you don't need to render it real time. So you can have as many triangles as possible, but it's always good to be aware of how much triangle you have. Now, the reason why I said that is subdivision services is give you, in order to get this look from just a rectangle, uh, from, a, from a cube, in order to make the, the side smooth, like it's, it's not really rigid, look you have to add more vertex more triangle around your objects in and then that will bring your count up with the subdivisions modifier you bypass all that so your triangle you you can still get that smooth look of your object without actually adding new um Mesh, I mean, new triangle into your objects. So it's very good to have a very, I guess, a smooth object without having like millions of millions of uh, new vertex in your objects, right? So in this case, the reason why is actually making uh, these weird textures here. Oh, you know, you have to fix in your uh in your normal without the uh the modifier in your normal object here you have to add a little bit more of triangle so that's as you can see i'm adding more um, vertex here by control r and then I move it to the right. As you can see, that's fixed that problem there. No problem. So <laughs> that's it. That's pretty easy, right? <laughs> Hopefully you get that. Um, if that, then I'll, uh, uh, if you still have any questions, uh, I can try to you know, answer your questions later on. Okay, now let's go back to finishing this. Well, we're pretty much finished. Let's let's unhide all the other objects, which is Alt H. 
Okay, so you got everything's textures now. All right, so that's pretty much done for your texturing. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, put it in a camera. So the reason why you put it in camera, that will be your final piece, how it's going to look once you render, sorry, once you render this um, object this uh, model. Uh, the camera mode is a numpad zero. As you can see, you got this. This is your camera here inside this box, right? Your camera view. So normally, let's bring this up again. Let's change this since we're done with texturing let's change this into a 3d viewport again you don't need that this is your camera here if you if you scroll um if you scroll up far enough from your object you can see this triangle look So like a pyramid look here is that is your camera and this uh, rectangle rectangle here that's your camera lenses. Okay, and this one here is your uh, lighting. So let's not worry about that. Let's worry about the camera first. Okay, so if you want to change the angle, right now. This is, uh, okay, let me change, okay. So if you wanna change this angle of the camera so it doesn't look, uh, let's say you wanna move it more to the front. So you have to click on the camera here and then you have to move it and then you have to rotate it, right? So it's kind of difficult to do. So from the front view, it's probably the easiest way from the orthographic, then you can, Now it's just kind of difficult to do by moving this camera here. So the best way to, if you want to move your camera angle is if you see the menu here on the side, there's an item tool and view. If you click on the view, right? And then you have this uh, lock cam uh, camera to view. Okay, if you select that, that means uh, you can, do moving like normal and you can see uh, your camera moving as well that's uh that's the best way to set up your camera is to just like if you want to zoom out zoom in rotate as you can see your camera is moving because it's uh, locking your camera to the view so you can move your view like a normal 3d port uh, with the uh, alt, the mouse, left mouse button, middle mouse button, and the right mouse button. Okay, right. So let's say I want to move it this way a little bit. And I want to have a little bit of the inside. So it's it's pretty much the same like before, but uh, so a little bit. Okay, I think that's, uh, let's do it this way. All right, so that's your camera. That's when you render this uh, image, it will come out like this. Now, the, uh, the next thing you want to do is if you go up here, this is your lighting here. So if you go to the orthographic view, press one, the front view. This is your lighting. You can see how that changes, right? Now your lighting, oh, uh, for the camera settings, uh, generally you don't really need to change your camera settings, uh, but if you wanna change your, uh, the size of the camera, if, if you click on your camera and you go to the property here on the right, there's a camera icon here and you click on it, then you can change your focal length, 
your type perspective, orthographic, you know, like, and you can change the lens unit, depth, depth of fields. You can change all this. There's a lot of options here that you can change. For, for the beginner or for the most part, this is pretty good. Like, I mean, you don't really need, it's a pretty good setting, at least in my opinion. You don't really need to change that much, but if you know a lot of the camera, like, I mean, you're dealing with a camera, then you will understand the vocal lengths and stuff like that. Then you can change it here. And the same thing if with the lighting here, this source of lights here. Now, if you click on the lighting, you can change from point lighting or you can use the sun lighting. That means like uh, you're using the sun as a lighting. Uh, and then the spot lighting, you can see here is like a spot and you got the area lighting. So it's depending on white, what kind of scenes do you want to have and what's the best to light your uh, subject. That's probably something that I'm sure uh, uh, the skills that uh, I'm pretty sure Tom has uh, like a course, like a workshop for lighting, and that will be a good course to take in order to understand how to light your subject uh, in photography or in movie. And it, essentially what you learn from there, you can transfer it into this 3D Blender as well. So at this specific purposes, I'm just going to use a point lighting, which is, I think is pretty good enough. All right, so, and then you can change the color to whichever color you want the lighting as well. And let's make it a little bit orangey. <laughs> And then the power of the lighting is like now it's set to a thousand. Well, the higher the higher it is, like let's say ten thousand is, you know, it's obviously too much lighting. And then if you put ten, it's not much lighting in this case. So a thousand is a good amount. Maybe we'll try two thousand. All right, that's eh, fifteen hundred. So size of lighting, um, how intense the lighting is. And then the specular, you can play around with that too. The radius, you can play around like how big of the radius of the light, right? Uh, as you can see at the bottom there, it changes radius. But point one is pretty good. And then you can click the shadows, right? That will give you shadows around. Oh, and another thing, I think the one that's really good is to have a plane underneath your object. This is kind of like a ground plane, right? So, and then we'll just, make a, a new material and just choose a color. Maybe just that color there. Kind of weird. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of neutral. Okay, let's do that. Now, the reason why it's good to have a ground is then select You can see where the object is. Is it sitting on the object? Click the subject. Yeah, that's okay. On the shadow, that's the shadow will help the uh, object feel grounded on the surface. 
So make it more uh, interesting instead of just floating on space. <laughs> so let's say we want there. Mm, let's change the angle a little bit. Okay, so it's all right. That's not bad. All right, so let's. Uh, that will be your final render there. Now the next thing you need. To, uh, I'm going to touch subject is rendering. So in Blender, you have these three different render engines. Now, what, what that means is the only thing that I believe is very important at the moment that you should know is these two here, EV and Cycle renders. Now, with EV, EV render engine is a built-in render engine in Blender that is for a real-time rendering. So basically right now is we are in, oh, we are in render mode. That means it's rendering your, uh, this is almost exactly like how it looks like once you render properly, right? With EV is like, you can see right away like how it looks like and like, like how the final, piece directly in your screen and it's real time. So this is mostly used in game. In, when you're playing games, they, uh, the computer will use a real-time uh, real rendering engine, right? Like um, if you're familiar to, there's a, a bunch of different engines uh, for real-time. Uh, I forget what it's called, but if you're familiar with like gaming, there are different uh, render engines for real time. And it looks like as, as the technology gets more sophisticated, it gets more and uh, more details. And um, the game is getting more, uh, if you play like the, uh, the, you know, the latest gen games, it looks pretty real, right? So that's, is all using a real-time render engine. So Blender real-time render engine is Eevee. And uh, as this is really, uh, this is like a new thing. I think it just came out last year and is changed the game because you can see your textures as it's being made and you can see, you know, what it's, what's the mistake you make and like how to fix it. And especially when you're dealing with the lightings and everything, it's good to know right away without needing to take like an hour to render your scene before it's finished and before you can finally see like how it looks like. Uh, so it speed up your process basically. And in terms of like working process is, it's definitely make a game changers especially in my industry right now and i can i don't really need to wait or two to render my scenes in order to see how it's going to look like final right so um but as you can see the real-time engine is pretty good it's uh, you can see it's pretty looks pretty real but if you're looking at the like a movie quality like a visual effects from movies and stuff like that, that really you can tell the difference whether it's real or whether it's visual effects. You will use a different render engine. You don't want to use Eevee because, you know, no matter how look good with Eevee, the real-time engine, you can tell that this is a 3D generated uh, textures. The one that you want to use, if you're dealing with like a very realistic render, you want to use cycles. Now, cycle will is it just a different engines that and different way of Blender doing the calculation. And with cycle is everything's as you can see the difference here is like the way they render it is 
it uh, feels more realistic, at least to me. So if if you have time, if you're dealing, if you're working, making a short films or anything like that, I suggest that you use cycles instead of EV. EV is good for the initial render, but you want to see how it looks like in cycles. Much better, I think. Uh, much more realistic looking with cycles. Now, let's look at the options here in cycles. The, uh, the thing that I think is very important is here, the CPU, GPU. Basically, the CPU right now, Blender is using your CPU uh, uh, processing power to render it. But if you have a very good graphic cards like NVIDIA, GTX, and that have a very high-end, those high-end graphic cards, you want to use a GPU compute. The reason why is because rendering with the GPU is much, much faster compared to the CPU. This is like a very simple object, so it's not a problem to use a CPU. But if you have like a really complicated scenes with lots of lightings, atmospheres, you know, trees, all that stuff, a lot, lots of textures in your scenes. Rendering can take forever. Like rendering one image, it can take you about like two to six hours an image. So if you have like an animations that have like three hundred frames, if one image takes like two to six hours to render, it's like imagine like how much, how many, uh, how long it's gonna take for your computer to render three hundred images. So that's why rendering with the GPU, it, that will cut down your rendering process um, quite a bit. It's actually like depending on how uh, high level, I mean, high end your graphic card is. Uh, but again, that's your preference. So it's you, and then you can change the settings here. Uh, the sampling here. The render right now, this image is rendered in one hundred. It's like one hundred and twenty-eight pixels. So like the, you know, it's it's okay, but the higher the the pixel that you render, let's say five hundred, the more details your image will look like. That means like if you're rendering in four K. Like if you like making a film for a 4K, you probably want to have like all the way to like a thousand in uh, in here because it's so detailed that uh, when you zoom in on certain things, like you can see so much of like everything in the scene. So and if you only render it in 128, so it's kind of like watching like a an old VHS in the 4K TV, so it's very, uh, it's not very good quality. So this is the quality of how much render. So the higher the number is, the more details you will get. But of course, the higher the number, the longer it is, it will be to render your image. So that's where you need to uh, make a balance between the two, like how fast is your computer and all that stuff. So the viewport right now is rendering at 32, but if I'm rendering in, uh, which is basically I'm um, rendering for the final image, it's gonna render in 500 pixels. So I'm just gonna put this back in 128. So, and Obviously, you can change all the settings here. I'm not going to go into details in here, but um, the more you use Blender, the more you understand like how what this specific uh, function is. But uh, this, at this point right now, we don't really need to know about any of this at the moment. Now, I'm just going to go back to EV again real quick. And then the same thing with EV. You can have um, change all the samplings. And you can change the ambient inclusions. You see, if you like, click the ambient inclusion, it making more, uh, I guess, giving a little bit more details into your image. 
the bloom subsurface scatterings and all. you can play around with this um, if you if you like to but right now what we have here work um, uh, so I'm going to render here right now next thing to do is go to render on the top left here and then you can render image or you can render animations right now what we need to do is just render image and then it will open a new voila that's your uh, final render now this is for um this ev render if you want to change to uh, cycles let's just change this into solid so and then go to render and render image now this is what i'm saying is like with the cycle it takes longer to render but basically one box it has to be rendered like 128 that pixel has to get there so it takes a bit of time to do that and since you know like uh, you can if you follow along and then you can play around with the render the settings and and you can see the difference the more complicated your scenes the more you will see the difference between you know the higher render images the ev but this should uh, have you start making um, art right away and hopefully uh, you'll be able to take this streak uh, part classes and we'll start be able to create stuff on in blender and uh, i'm really sincerely hope that you learn uh, something from my class and um, next week i'm going to cover a different kind of modeling which is basically using um, uh, sculpting and uh, we just gonna touch a little bit on sculpting next week uh, sculpting is a different way of uh, modeling an object so uh, compared to what we did like last time is think about it as uh, if you have like a plaster or a thing like um in real time like it's basically you're sculpting the objects uh in computer instead of with your hands so we'll touch and that will help with making a more organic look like next week we're gonna try to sculpt a rock it's a very simple object it's rock is not very um rigid in terms of like the shape so it's it's very organic in the way it looks so we're gonna try to sculpt something like a like a rock and then do like a quick texturing and then you can uh, you can play around you have another tool to help you create uh image or like art in with blender program so anyway uh, that's it from me and uh see if tom has uh, any questions from some of you perfect thanks leon yeah that was that was awesome um now, in terms of, uh, I think there, there's one question here, and maybe that's something we can do is, or, or we can put a link out. Um, if there's uh, uh, the shortcuts, the short commands, uh, maybe there's, you know, the, uh, like a quick shortcuts, um, like listing, you know, like for all the quick commands. Oh, uh, <coughs> I think the best way to find it, like if you, uh, this is another channel that's really good if you're learning Blender. It's called Blender Guru. Uh, you can just Google it, uh, Blender Guru at uh, the Blender shortcut commands, and he compiled uh, pretty much like everything that you need to know about the Blender shortcut commands in there. Perfect. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I think that's, that's, uh, that, that's a great uh, resource. And I think you mentioned that before too, that there's a lot of uh, online, um, uh, you know, further resources and things. And I think uh, uh, it's, there's a big community around Blender. So I think that's great that, you know, if just Google, you know, if you have other questions, you can always like Google those kind of tech questions. 
Um, but I think, yeah, the, the creative of what, you, what you're showing here and the sculpting, that sounds really good. Um, I, I just want to mention to everyone that we'll have, um, when you register for these, there's always the links to the previous classes. So today's class, when you registered, there's the links for parts one and two. And I'm also going to post the YouTube channel um, link in this thread um, today as well. So everyone can, you can access it and we'll load part three and then part four. So you can rewatch all of these. And at the end of today, you can rewatch it right here on the Crowdcast link as well. So um, yeah, no, I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions, but if there are any questions, let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we're good. That was the main thing was just getting the quick commands. Um, you know, if there's kind of more on that, but I think that's great. Yeah, that people can access Blender Guru. Um, I put that up there as well. Um, but yeah, no. If uh, if anybody has uh, more questions, you can ask it next week as well. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah, because we'll have, um, and and if you have any questions, even if you think of something, yeah, like like what Leon's saying, because next Saturday there's you know if you come up with some questions while you review any of this material and you still have some questions, um, you can, yeah, we can we can get to those next week as well. So that's perfect, yeah. So no, I think that's, um, that's it for here. Um, so yeah, thanks again, everyone for joining us. I uh, wanna thank all our uh, partners in, the, in this project for making it happen, Canada Council for the Arts, um, and our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library, and and a big thank you to, to Leon for making this happen and uh, spending his Saturday uh, morning doing this. So I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, here, I'll just put it back to you, Leon. You can sign off. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so again, uh, we'll have everything on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, have, if you have questions, please join us again next week, same time next Saturday, 10 a.m. If you haven't registered for it already, I put the link up. Uh, you can go to our website, tbmcs.ca. That will take you to the YouTube channel. Uh, but I'll also post the uh, direct link to the, um, the, uh, the area with all the uh, animation uh, sections or sessions. So yeah, thanks again, everyone. Um, have a great uh, rest of the Saturday. Um, enjoy your weekend and um, stay warm. It's, uh, it's cold here in the, in the Blue Mountains. <laughs> so, okay, have a good one. Take care.